Russia's latest efforts to defend its new T-90M tanks, which Putin calls the best in the world, are failing, and that should be a lesson to Western tank makers, writes Forbes. The publication cites a recently published video that shows the successful destruction of a Russian T-90 tank, with a triple-decker armor of additional layers of armor on the front in Ukraine. The Russians claim that their newest T-90M tanks are supposed to be equipped with the Arena Active Defense System, which fires radar-guided projectiles to shoot down drones. However, Forbes reports that it has not yet been seen in action and may never appear. Meanwhile, tankers are trying to improve their chances by adding extra armor. In the latest version, we see a T-90M with a screen on the roof covered with ERA and an additional screen on the roof for three-layer protection. As the latest video shows, the additional measures did not help, the magazine states. It is noted that another T-90M was recently spotted with a drone jammer mounted in a visible place on the roof. But this tank was also quickly destroyed by a Baba Yaga drone bomber, the article says. And this, as the publication believes, is further evidence that Russian jammers are unreliable and often useless. Even if tanks have a lot of jammers, it won't stop them from being destroyed by drones. The only way for tanks to survive at the moment is to simply stay out of FPV range. Many reports indicate that the Russians now have a tank-free zone extended six miles from the front lines. Losing a tank track is like having a bicycle chain break. It stops the vehicle from moving, but is fairly easy to repair. If spare track segments are available, the tank crew can replace it in an hour or so. This is impossible when you are under fire, but an armored recovery vehicle can tow the tank back to safety. Russian engineers have the BREM-1M T90 recovery vehicle for exactly this job, but it has to get there before the demolition drones. Let us recall that according to information from the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, since the beginning of the large-scale invasion, Russian troops have lost no less than 8,908 tanks on the battlefield. In September 2024, Russian forces reported record losses, continuing a trend from previous months, while equipment shortages became increasingly evident. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko made this statement in an analysis of Russia's monthly losses for a joint project between Oboz Revitel media outlet and Information Resistance. In September, the losses of the Russian forces maintained the average figure over the past five months, amounting to 38,130 people. This is the second highest figure since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The personnel losses in 2024 remain among the highest for the entire period of the war because infantry is the main offensive potential of the Russian army and there is less and less equipment available for this purpose. In September, the Russian army lost 291 tanks, which is not much different from the summer figures and is one of the lowest totals for the entire period of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Only in the second half of September, after a significant intensification of the offensive on Vuladar, did losses increase on a monthly average basis. Due to the intensification of the offensive in several areas, the Russian army lost 787 armored combat vehicles in September, a notably high figure, especially compared to the summer months. The Pokrovsk, Kurakov direction and the Volodar area are particularly significant in terms of the number of losses. In September, the losses of cannon artillery in the Russian army amounted to 1,219 units. This is far from a record, but it is more than in May, and it is also a good confirmation that the counter-battery fight of the Ukrainian Defense Forces is much more successful than that of the Russian Federation. In September, the losses of multiple launch rocket systems by the Russian occupation forces maintained the traditionally low average of recent months, totaling 28 units, compared to the average for cannon artillery. Such low rates of loss for MLRS by the Russian army are due to a shortage of these systems and austerity measures implemented by the command. Air defense systems are another category that the Russian army is losing without being able to compensate for these losses. In September, 23 of them were destroyed. In September, Russian forces reported very high motor vehicle losses, totaling 1,740. The reasons are consistent. 
a shortage of tanks, armored personnel carriers, and other armored vehicles. In September, the Russian army lost 323 pieces of special equipment, setting an absolute record. This increase is due not only to the Russian army stepping up engineering work near the contact line and attempting to evacuate damaged equipment from the battlefield, but also to efforts throughout September to establish logistics across the Seam River in the Glushkovsky district of the Kursk region. All of this has contributed to this significant, though still important, record of losses for the Russian forces. The Russian army has concentrated half a million of its troops in the south and east of Ukraine. This was stated by Captain First Rank of the Ukrainian Navy Reserve, former Deputy Chief of Staff of the Ukrainian Navy Andriy Ryzenko, commenting on the withdrawal of the Ukrainian armed forces from Ugladar to other positions. If we look at the overall picture of military actions on the contact line, we will see that the Russians have now concentrated an extremely large number of troops in the south and east, which is estimated at about half a million people. You can imagine, Ryzenko emphasized on the air of the Espresso TV channel. He recalled that when the full-scale Russian invasion began, there were 150,000 Russian troops in seven different directions. Right now, in three directions, there are actually three times more. The Russians have been tasked with capturing the maximum territory of the Donetsk region, getting as close as possible to regional centers such as Zaporizhia, Dnieper, Sumy, Kharkiv, in order to regularly shell them with long-range artillery and cabs. We are talking about a distance of 50 to 70 kilometers. This is being done to further destabilize the socio-economic situation in Ukraine, influence the population, etc., said a reserve captain of the Ukrainian army. According to him, Ugladar is one of the points that the enemy has been trying to capture for a long time, concentrating very serious forces there. Unfortunately, they managed to capture this city, which is an unfortunate fact. But if you look at the overall strategic picture, it did not give them much. Indeed, there was contradictory information about the situation there, but we must trust the position of the armed forces of Ukraine. It was definitely very, very difficult there, because the Russian army uses the tactics of attrition. It is essentially overwhelming our armed forces with a huge number of weapons, cabs, artillery, rocket artillery, mines and so on, said the captain of the first rank. According to Ryzenko, now taking this fact into account, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine is analyzing the situation in order to maximally restrain the enemy in fulfilling the strategic task, implementing influence on the specified regional centers.